What if I told you that you don't know how to take a shower? There is an art to taking a shower and today I am gonna be breaking it down for you guys step by step how to take a shower properly. The first thing is how often should you be taking a shower? I actually asked you guys on Instagram how often you shower. The majority of you said two times a day. So in reality, showering twice a day is actually going to dry out your skin, especially if you have sensitive skin. On the other end, showering once every three to four days, that is going to create a buildup of oil and bacteria and sweat and germs on your skin, you could develop some sort of not so great smelling body odor. If you have extremely sensitive skin, maybe do once every two days, but generally speaking, it's once a day and the best time to shower is at night because you are going to be laying in your bed after you take a nice shower. And then when you wake up in the morning, you are nice and clean to start your day. What is the temperature of water that you should use to take a shower? So the temperature I recommend is lukewarm water. If the water is too hot, hot then it's gonna dry out your skin and if you're like me you may love taking a steaming hot shower but every time that I take a steaming hot shower I exit the shower feeling like Spongebob on that episode where he was in desperate need of water and he was like extremely dry and it typically is just not like the healthiest thing to do to take a freezing cold shower so lukewarm that's where it's at the first part of your shower, you enter the shower and what is the first thing that you wanna clean? Do you have any guesses? Is it your ears? Is it your feet? Is it your belly button? No, I feel like I'm talking to a group of toddlers. <laughs> the first thing that you wanna clean in the shower is your hair. So first, you're gonna shampoo your hair. This could quickly turn into a hair care routine and that's not what this video is about. So if you want my hair care routine, I will link it in the description below. Basically, you just wanna start washing your hair with shampoo. Only shampoo the roots and scalp. You don't need to shampoo the ends because when you rinse the shampoo out, it's gonna coat your ends anyway. Also, your scalp is what produces oils. So that's really where you need to be removing the buildup of product and oils. You don't really get oils on your ends unless you put them there directly. So the next step is to condition your hair. To condition, you wanna apply conditioner from the mid length of your hair to the ends and you wanna leave it in for two to three minutes. You're probably thinking, what do you do in the two to three minutes when you're in the shower? when you just have conditioner. You wanna clean your armpits. You wanna take this time to thoroughly clean and as I like to call it, detox your armpits. This is like a hidden crevice, so it is okay to clean this area when you have conditioner in your hair. When the conditioner rinses out, it's not going to disrupt the cleanliness of your armpits. So to clean your armpits, you want to use Castile soap diluted. Castile soap is really going to get rid of the deodorant residue that is on your armpits because deodorant residue must be gone before you shave your armpits. If it's not, the deodorant could get clogged in your razor, you could get clogged pores, you could get ingrown hairs in your armpits. This applies for your entire body, but when you are cleaning your armpits, you do not want to use a washcloth no loofahs, no body brushes, just use your hands. Those things like loofahs and stuff, all they do is harbor bacteria. You just don't need them. So all you need to do is apply the soap directly with your hands onto your body. Then I just take my razor and I shave my armpits after I've rinsed off the soap. I actually don't shave my armpits with shaving cream or anything like that. I just use a razor and water. The skin that's under my arms, it's not as sensitive as the skin like on my face or on my legs. So I don't need a barrier in between the razor and my skin. But if you do have sensitive armpit skin, then you can just shave with something like conditioner, which I will get into in a few minutes. When you're rinsing the conditioner off, you're gonna notice that it is rinsing down your back. The acne that you have on your back is there because of the order in which you do things in the shower. If you do not wash your body after conditioner, 
then you could get clogged pores from the conditioner on your body and that can lead to acne, specifically back acne, butt acne, just any type of body acne. This is why it is absolutely crucial to have your hair care be the very first thing that you do in the shower. So after you wash your hair, you need to put your hair up in a claw clip. And this is really important because if you just leave your hair down, then you're gonna get body soap on your hair, specifically on the ends of your hair, and that's gonna dry out your hair. If you don't have a claw clip, you can also just use a hair drying towel or a cotton t-shirt. So I don't have a general rule of thumb for how often you should be washing your hair. It's gonna depend based on your hair type, based on your lifestyle and things like that. Just personally speaking, I wash my hair once every two to three days. I always get the question of, you don't wash your hair every day, does that mean that you don't shower every day? The answer is no, I shower every single day regardless of if I'm washing my hair or not. If I'm gonna take a shower and I am not gonna wash my hair, I will put it up in a claw clip or in a loose bun of some sort and I will just cover my hair with a shower cap. You then wanna wash your face. And this comes before washing your body because when you're washing your face, you are gonna be rinsing off all of the oils, any makeup that you might have on your face, and all of that is gonna run down your body. Now, if you have ever had chest acne, which I have, I'm not saying 100% it is because of this, but it could be because you're washing your face last in the shower and all of the oils, all of the foundation is running down your chest and you then get out of the shower and you just have a layer of all of that stuff on your chest sitting there clogging your pores and then you get chest acne. Likewise, you don't wanna have washing your face be the very first thing you do when you get in the shower before doing hair care because when you're using shampoo and conditioner, that can rinse onto your face and that can definitely irritate your skin. You don't want shampoo on your face. You don't want conditioner left on your face. Next is body wash. Let's talk about bar soap versus shower gel. When you think about bar soap, a lot of people think that it is a no-no because, because it's a breeding ground for bacteria. It's unsanitary, there's germs all over it, and you just, you don't wanna use bar soap. But this is actually not true. So there was a study done that found that bar soap does not leave any significant bacteria or any type of residue on the soap. And it actually does a really good job at thoroughly cleaning. So technically you can use either bar soap or body wash. I prefer bar soap because it leaves my skin and my body just feeling overall a lot cleaner than when I use body wash. Also bar soap is less wasteful than body wash because body wash typically comes in like a really big plastic container, um, whereas bar soap comes in a small little cardboard box thingy. So here is how I use my bar soap. I take the bar of soap and I rub it between my hands. I get a lather going and then I put the soap down in the soap dish that I have and I just use the suds on my hands to clean my body. If I am really, really filthy, I will use Irish Spring. If you have sensitive skin, if you have dry skin, please stay far, far away from Irish Spring. If you don't have any issues with your skin and you don't mind the really, really deep clean, then Irish Spring may help you. But this is not something that I use every day by any means. It is way too drying to use every day. On an everyday basis, I use this Dove antibacterial body soap that also has moisturizing properties in it. So it's gonna clean your skin, but it is also going to add some hydration to your skin so that it doesn't dry it out. Now, if you are gonna use something like Irish Spring, you wanna immediately Moisturize your skin when you get out of the shower. So I always use shea butter. I actually have a whole video on how I make my DIY shea butter. I will link it below in the description, but this is what I use in combination with Irish Spring. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the occasional like warm vanilla sugar or sweet pea body wash from Bath and Body Works. It is totally unnecessary to expose your skin to those types of scents on a regular basis because to smell good, 
good. The main thing you need to focus on is cleaning these certain areas of your body that we sometimes miss. Behind your ears, the amount of sweat that can build up behind your ears is uh, a lot, um, especially because your hair is so close. When you are talking to someone face to face, your ears are most likely right at eye level to the person who you're speaking to. They're gonna be able to smell if there's a funky smell coming from behind your ears. Also just like in your ears and just this whole area, your neck as well. This is an area where you can get a lot of oil and sweat. And when you're speaking to someone, this again is right at eye level. Another place is like the folds in your skin. So in between or like this part of your elbow, the opposite side of your elbow, underneath your knees, in between your fingers, in between your toes, in your belly button. And there's actually one place that is notoriously stinky and that you should be waiting until the very, very end of your shower to clean. This is your feet. By the way, the reason why you want to wait until the end to clean your feet is because you're standing in the shower and all of the oil is getting washed off of your body and it's going on the floor of the shower. So your feet are just standing in that for the entire duration of the shower. Therefore, it's best to wait until the very end to clean your feet. What is the next step? Exfoliation. Chemical exfoliant versus physical exfoliant. How often should you be exfoliating? Where do you need to exfoliate? Do you even need to exfoliate? So first of all, no, you, you don't technically need to exfoliate. It is something that you can do to make your skin a lot smoother, to make it brighter, to just make it more glowy. And there are two different types of exfoliants on the market. So there's physical exfoliants and these are like the grainy ones. They're often made with like sea salt or if you've seen the brand Tree Hut, those are like the physical exfoliants. And then you have chemical exfoliants and those are ones that have things like alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid, salicylic acid, and they work to remove buildup of dead skin with those chemicals. And then with physical exfoliants, they're using the actual physical scrub to scrub the dead skin off of your skin. Exfoliation can prevent things like folliculitis. I think I'm pronouncing that right? Folliculitis. Ingrown hairs, just any type of clogged pores on your body, they're removing like extra buildup on your skin. And it also helps your body care products to work more effectively after you exfoliate because the products are more easily able to penetrate your skin. Physical exfoliants are great because they work immediately. The only downside is that they can be abrasive, especially if you have sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin, you probably don't wanna use a physical exfoliant. Chemical exfoliants are amazing. They just take a little bit longer to work. So once you use it, it takes a little bit of time for the ingredients to fully break down the dead skin. However, chemical exfoliants, contrary to what you may think, they actually are great for sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin, chemical exfoliants are probably gonna be what you wanna use. You really only need to exfoliate maybe like once or twice a week, no more than that. You don't wanna over exfoliate because that can really irritate your skin. It can also make you more susceptible to sun damage and just, inflammation on your skin. Next, you should shave. I shave with conditioner and a razor. I don't like shaving cream because it makes my skin really dry. And conditioner just helps to really smooth out my skin. It kind of just acts like a lotion. Like it's it's like a lotion-y type shaving agent. And when I put it on my legs, I never get any sort of acne on my legs. If I have conditioner on my back, yes, I'm gonna get acne, but on my legs, it's totally fine. So the second to last place that you wanna clean in the shower, this is an area of your body that I think 99% of you probably do not clean. And it is an area of your body that harbors a lot of uh, germs and bacteria. This is, any guesses? Underneath your nails. 
And I save it for the second to last thing to do in the shower because any type of dirt or oil that you've picked up while you're in the shower cleaning your body, that is going to be removed at the very end of your shower so that when you leave the shower, you have fresh, clean hands and nails. So to clean my nails, I just use this little nail brush that I have. I put some Castile soap on it, just a teeny tiny amount. And then I just like, you know, scrub, scrub, a lot underneath my nails. And I also do this on my toenails. This is another place where you can really get a lot of buildup. So when I'm done using the nail brush, I rinse it with really, really hot water underneath the sink. And then I just clean it off with some antibacterial soap and I leave it out to dry. Now onto the last and final thing that you should be cleaning in the shower, and this is your feet. So to clean your feet, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just use whatever soap you use to clean your body. And then another like extra thing that you can do is I like to use this little like foot scrub thingy that they use at nail salons. And I'll just put a little bit of this physical exfoliant that I have. I like to use one by Necessaire and then and I also have one by Tree Hut, so I'll just put a little bit on that and I will scrape the dead skin off of my feet. Now, I just, I really deal with a lot of calluses. So I need to do this like once or twice a week. If you don't get calluses, I am very jealous, but you don't really need to do this, period. And this, ladies and gentlemen, has been how to take a shower. Although it may seem totally unnecessary, it's just one of those things that you probably don't realize you're doing wrong, but once you figure it out, it is a game changer. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.